welcome back. Uh, we're going to continue discussing the big push model. So this is the slide that we were before. Uh, now, here's a quick summary. If the modern sector wages are low enough, then there is no need for a big push. Why? Because all firms find, find it profitable to um, switch to modern, sorry, modern technology. Okay, so in that case, there is a unique equilibrium, right? Uh, switching to modern technology is profitable because uh, modern, modern technology wages are sufficiently low so that every firm, every traditional firm uh, starts start using modern technology, okay? If uh, modern sector wages are higher, but not too high, so if, if they're on the middle, then there is a need for a big push. Why? Because my profitability as a standalone firm depends on uh, what other firms will do, all right? So in that case, we have two equilibria. One uh, is that all firms uh, switch to modern technology and the other equilibria where no firm switches to modern technology, okay? And if modern sector wages are too high, sufficiently high, then uh, the equilibrium is again uh, unique and at that equilibrium, no firm switch to new technology. Why? Because even if all firms switch to new technology, then it is not profitable. It is still not profitable, all right? So that no firm uh, would, switch to, would switch to the new technology, all right? So that was, the, that was the summary. And of course, in this model, our conceptual, conceptualization is this. So switching to modern technology means industrialization using factory system, uh, other organizational improvements that we usually attach to industrialization, et cetera, okay? Now, there are a couple of further issues to discuss. Uh, one is uh, technological externalities, all right? So there are, in reality, uh, positive or negative spillover effects across firms, all right? Um, for instance, firms learning new production methods from one another in a costless way, right? Imagine that uh, your neighbor firm uh, switches to new technology, then you can learn certain things about this new technology without paying any cost, all right? So such externalities also are important. Um, there are some other cases where uh, big push may be necessary. So in the simple model, we don't have these features, but in more realistic settings, we would have, for instance, intertemporal effects. What is that? Um, if your investment that you make today uh, realizes some, return, some returns in tomorrow, okay, then, uh, Demand, of course, will be higher in the next period, okay? So because of these effects, uh, simultaneous investments are necessary, all right? So if I, if I read this here, um, there can still be multiple equilibria if there are intertemporal effects. For instance, if the investment that makes production more efficient in period T plus one must be undertaken in period T, again, this is more realistic, right? So you invest today, you, you, you invest today, but that investment uh, gives you modern technology or higher capital next period. Then firms must expect that demand will be large enough in period T plus one, okay? So they have to be, uh, they have to wait for it, okay? But then uh, this requires investments in period T, all right? Then we have urbanization as a second factor. Uh, typically urban sector, uh, you know, in the urban sector, 
returns are larger. Why? Typically because of agglomeration effects, okay? Demand is much more concentrated. Uh, uh, in the next week, we're gonna see, for instance, uh, what we call assortative mating or assortative matching. So higher skilled uh, individuals are employed in higher skilled, higher technology firms, et cetera. So um, because of this, uh, first, uh, you may want to promote urbanization as the policymaker, then urbanization creates strong incentives for the firms in the urban sector, urban areas to switch to modern technologies, okay? Another thing is infrastructure. Um, if you invest a lot in infrastructure, that would be good for um, making it easier for firms to switch to new technology. Why? Because uh, modern technologies require uh, better infrastructure. If you want to switch to factory system, for instance, you need better roads. You need uh, a better transportation mechanism in the economy, all right? Uh, but again, uh, this require, this, this again creates some, some sort of a tragedy of commons, right? Because uh, a couple of firms, suppose that a couple of firms get together and they agree on switching to new technology, but uh, they need infrastructure. So if they incur some of the costs of infrastructure by themselves, then this creates the externalities for other firms, but then those costs, those initial infrastructure costs must be, um, must be um, compensated for these firms, all right? Um, so these fixed costs, uh, so there must be some mechanisms uh, to, to incentivize that infrastructure investment. So if, if the government is doing that, it's better for all firms, but if there's no, uh, uh, if there's no government or central planning mechanism that increases such uh, infrastructure investments, that delays industrialization. Um, finally, there is some underinvestment in training. Why? Because if you let these firms to behave only by themselves, they, they would imagine that uh, okay, again, there is this disadvantage to be the first one, okay? So suppose that new technologies require uh, new skills. And if you want to switch new, new technology, you want to educate your workers, you want to train your engineers, you want to create new skills uh, so that these newly skilled, newly educated workers work in your a firm with the new technology to produce more output. But then, um, again, because of the externality, those uh, newly trained workers, where you pay the training cost, can go to the other firms, okay? Uh, they can go and establish their own firms uh, by using the skills that you paid for, all right? So if you let this market behave competitively, um, the, the, uh, the private return is lower than the social return so that there is under investment in training. There's under investment in uh, new skills, okay? So that also creates uh, multiple equilibria and that would create big push. For instance, now the government should do something like this. Okay, firms, all right, if you want to switch to new technology, you need uh, better educated engineers. Then I open universities and I train these engineers in universities so you will have no shortage of such skills, okay? Then that would create, again, a big push effect because that would increase profitability of all firms simultaneously, all right? saw that firms benefit from such, you know, government intervention and profitability is getting larger and there's no tragedy of commons problem now because uh, firms will understand that if they go to the labor market, they will find new, uh, new, new and better educated and engineers, all right? Then it is better and easier for them to switch to new technology, okay? Yeah, that was the last slide. Um, 
So as you see, once we start thinking about uh, circular causation, once we start thinking about uh, more realistic, in, you know, in, in more realistic terms about actual economies, uh, then we see the possibility of multiple equilibria, the possibility of coordination failures, the possibility, the possibilities where markets, markets fail because of expectations, because of interdependencies among different agents, because of incentives, etc. Okay, so that is again an old idea developed in 40s, early 40s by uh, Rosenstein Rodan, and there are others such as uh, Albert Hirschman, um, um, Robert Nurks, or Philip Nurks, I, I don't remember the first name, but Nurks is also another important guy. Uh, we have uh, Myrdal, Gunnar Myrdal. So those uh, development economists uh, played with this idea of circular causation, all right? Uh, so investment by one firm depends on what other firms are doing. Investment by one worker into new skills depends on what other workers and the firms in the economy are doing, okay? So those mechanisms create uh, market failures and eventually poverty traps. So big push idea, uh, as you see here, is, is one simple uh, mechanism where we associate development with transition to new technology. Because we understand that if firms transit to new technology in all the other uh, sectors, there, there are many, many goods in the economy, many services in the economy, and those goods and services can be produced with traditional and modern simultaneously. So the idea is to incentivize these firms to switch to new technology because new technology is more productive as you see the slope of the uh, 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 slope is larger for the, for the modern technology. But then there are some tradition, there are some uh, coordination problems, okay? To, to solve these coordination problems, you need a mechanism that, increase, uh, that increases profitability of all the firms in the economy, uh, mainly through demand, so that they all switch to this new technology and uh, industrialization starts. And if you compare, so if you, if you, want, to, if you want to get the real sense of how, how, this how this idea is very important, compare this logic, for instance, with Rostov's idea. In the, in the Rostov model, it is all linear. In Herod Domar model, it is all linear, right? But in such models with circular causation, um, with coordination failures and multiple equilibria, you may stuck in the power to trap. You may, you may, get, uh, you may get in the power to trap and you may never uh, break out this trap. Okay, so I'm gonna stop here, and now I can I can answer your questions or respond to your comments. Anyone? Okay, I already sent the link through the chat. This again is a highly technical paper, but you can you can still read the introduction and the and the conclusion. So non-technical parts could be of some interest. Uh, I'm gonna post a non-technical reading um, to our uh, Husam system. And next week, uh, let me double check. Next week we're gonna look at um, the. O-ring model, I guess. Um, let me just check. 
Uh, yes. So, so next week, we're going to look at Michael Kramer's O-ring theory. Okay. Um, please have a look at the textbook. There's a very nice discussion. Uh, we're going to introduce another type of um, another type of mechanism that may lead to uh, that may lead to power to traps. Okay, uh, that is called assortative match matching. So we're going to talk about strong complementarities in the production process. Um, it's you know similar but much more micro oriented. The, the, the notion of uh, assortative uh, matching. And that's all for today. If you have no questions or, uh, or anything to add. All right then, everybody is happy. Sesim kesiliyor. Hmm. Şu an nasıl? Tamam şu an okey hocam. Evet bağlantıda sorun olabilir onu söylemiştim. Hı -hı. Tamam var mı bir soru? Yorum etc. Sağ olun hocam. Yani lütfen kitabı okuyun. Kitaptaki örnekleri Dikkatlice inceleyin. Haftaya da O-ring teoriye bakacağız. O-ring theory. Tamam mı? O da kitap. Hocam bir de geçen haftanın slaytını sanırım koymadınız. Daha tamam. Koyarım onu da. Tamam. Okey o zaman. Have a nice week. My friends. Bye bye. Bye bye.